welcome to another video. In this video, we'll show you how to insert data using Titan Web to Salesforce using a stepper. Now, a stepper is an awesome functionality, and you can find it under containers. It's pretty cool, and you can use it just like a form, but a very dynamic form, and step your customers through a journey. So once you drag it over, there are a few things that are available right away. So first of all, these are your steps, pretty cool, and then these are your buttons. Let's talk static. Let's say, you know, I wanted to talk them through a step and I wanted them, want my customers to know what those steps are. So the first one could be create account. Second one could be create contact. And then last one is finish. All right. So now here you can see, oops, let's spell finish correctly. So yeah, here you can see the customer knows first step, I'm going to create an account, second contact, and third one, I'm just going to finish. Pretty easy. You can also do this dynamically. So let's say you wanted to click sync from Salesforce. Here you can choose any object. Let's say for example I choose account and then I choose my field account type. Now if I click save and click preview what you'll see is that pick list value has been pulled in like this and then every time one step is completed there's a checkbox. There's like a, like a check saying you've done it and it's very very cool functionality and you can even use the back button and the next button to walk you back and forth. It's very cool. So for now, I'm just going to keep it static and I'll show you some of the things you can do. You can even modify the value here instead of, um, you know, give it a certain value that we give you, you can change this to, you, to whatever you want. You call this one account, this one contact, this one finish, just like that. Whatever ID you want, really. And then you got interactivity functionality. You can make it vertical if you want, like this, or you can make it leave it horizontal. It's really up to you. And um, yeah, you, so you can make it distinct, allow step skip if you want. You can hide these controls. You can choose alternative label mode. And you can use a custom icon as well if you want. And on each icon, you can configure a finish action like this. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's say we're going to set this up one by one. So here I'm just going to drag a bunch of input fields and on the first one I'm going to call this one and then I'm going to clone this one as well. So we'll put this one here and this one over here and then this one I will call this account name like this and this one here we'll call this one account type and then over number two I'm just gonna say um, well, yeah, we'll just keep it simple we'll create first name last name and email drag one more field which is gonna be my email field. Alright, so this one is going to be first name, this one will be last name, and we will leave this one to be email. And then finally, on the last one, I'm just going to say finish, and I'm just going to configure my finish action shortly and I'll show you how to do it. So, create account. Here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to create everything in one go. So I'm just going to go to Salesforce integration. In fact, I'll go over here. We'll click on the gear icon, interactivity, configure on finish action, configure action, Salesforce action, configure integration. We're going to set up a push. So the first one is going to be account. And in the mapping, I'm going to say account name goes to account name and type goes to type like this. And on the right hand side I'll just open up my Salesforce and then we'll be good to go there. So let's log in and then the other field I want to map is type. So, so far I think if I can show you I've mapped two fields here which is fine and we'll click apply and then I'm going to add a child and child is going to create a contact and in the mapping we will say last name, last name first name, first name, and then email, or we'll go to email, just like that. Apply, 
close and here I'm going to push that action for the on finish just like that which is going to happen on the last page and then on the last page put a little text here saying click finish and you are done and I'll make this a bit wider here drag this over there like this like that alright so all of this is set up and ready for me to go and now all I have to do take it back to the front page click save and what we'll do is we will also access my accounts so I can show you what I've actually created alright so let's preview so here we are we're good to go everything is rendered and now I'm just going to begin my process so I'm going to call this stepper account and what we're going to do in the accounts here let me just check what sort of type that is available in fact I'm just going to copy this value here copy that and put this in here and now I can just go next to the next page and I can say stepper contact contact at step.com click next and then finally I'm ready to finish so if I finish my action is going to run and hopefully it would have created an account plus contact so how do we know that let's go to integration logs and then we'll check what's happened and there it is so if I go to my account wrong one it's not the one I wanted to go to right so I think I ended up in the wrong orb there so we will quickly show you again where the account was actually created Yeah, so here it is. Here's my account, the stepper account, and linked to it should be a contact. So let's have a look at the contact as well. And then this should be my stepper contact. So there you go. There's a stepper contact, there's a stepper account, and everything is working really, really nicely. You can see how you can use this. And you can utilize this in many different ways. You can even set up your own custom actions to go back and forth and completely hide the controls. And I'll show you how to use these controls in a stepper interactivity, which is for a separate video. And we'll show you the, how that works. But this one was very basic side of things in terms of how to set this up, um, how to work with some of the different interactivity functions, how you can make it vertical if you want. Uh, you can even reduce the size of each one into the styling options available, the different attributes to each one. You can do all of that there. So that's the uh, step of functionality for you.